Hey guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I want to show you guys how to replace the spring in the recoil assembly for the older Tecumseh engines on your snowblower. So I have to admit this is not the easiest recoil to replace the spring in and I'm going to try to not make it look too easy today because I want you guys to know exactly what you're getting into when you replace the recoil spring on this recoil. However, if you follow my video closely, you should not have any problems. So this recoil came in the shop and needed a new rope, but when I went to tighten up the spring, I just couldn't do it because the spring is damaged and it's no longer working. So no matter how much I tried to tighten up the spring here, it would just not load up. And you can see that right here. You try to tighten it and it does not go back. So the first thing you need to do here is remove this small sticker if you have one on your recoil. Now what I use for that is just my X-Acto knife here and I get it right under this sticker because I like to save the sticker and actually put it back when I'm done. And this is the pin that you need to access here. Now what I tell everybody if they're going to replace the spring themselves is to Take a good note of the pin here and how far it's sticking out from the base of the recoil here. So it looks like it's sticking out just over one eighth of an inch. And this is the pin on this side here. So what I'm going to do now is show you guys how to remove that pin. So grab yourself a 3 8 and a 5 16 pin punch. Now what I like to do is open up my vise like this and put this part here right here so that when I punch out the pin it goes through here. And the reason I like to use the vise is because it's a good support. You need this part here to be on the vise. You don't want the outer edge of the recoil because what's going to happen is you will bend the recoil inwards and that's not good. So all the pressure has to be on this part right here. Now for this next step make sure you're wearing safety glasses. And now what I do is I start off with the 3 8 punch. This one's a little bigger. It's got like a tip at the end here, but a 3 8 pin punch will do the same. I start off with the bigger punch until I reach the base of the recoil. So I'm just going to tap it. Now you can see that it is coming off, sticking out a bit. And now I switch to the 5 16 pin punch because it will go right through the center with the pin. And the pin should fall right inside the vise. Now you want to retrieve this part here. And then the pin is under here. And this is how the parts are installed on it. There's a spring and a small washer. You want to keep those in this exact same order. Now, once the pin is removed, you can pull out the whole rotor assembly, which the spring is attached to. Now, another thing to take a notice of is this little washer here. This is exactly where it goes. So I will remove that. And here's how the spring is installed on this part here. And the spring is actually part of this whole rope rotor. When you go to buy a new recoil spring for this recoil, this is what you'll get. And here's the replacement part. It's a natural Tecumseh part. It's part number 590709. Now double check your parts list before you order this part. This is the one that will go in about 90% of all the Tecumseh recoils out there for snowblowers. However, if you look at another rope rotor from another snowblower recoil, it's slightly different. You can tell just by the way this part here is made. So again, check your parts list before you go buy this part. And what I'll do is put this part number in the video description and the link to where you can buy it online. Now the first thing that I want to show you before I install this is how to make a small hole here so that when you install a new cord, you're able to get it in between this and the body of the recoil here and tighten up your spring. So we'll do that first and then I'll put all the parts from the other rope rotor onto this one. 
So what I'll do here is grab a small shank like this and a map torch or a propane torch. I will heat this up and melt a hole in there. And now just melt that hole in there. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area when you do this. You don't want to breathe that in. So I'll let this cool off. You want it to be big enough for the rope to go right in there. Now, once it's cooled down, you can just trim the burrs here. And that'll be perfect. Now, before I put the rope rotor onto the recoil assembly, I like to spray a bit of grease inside the spring area. Now you don't have to do this. Uh, it's totally optional, but it will help your spring in the long run to not rust and it will give it a bit of lubrication. And you can even spray the bottom if you want. And again, make sure that the grease you use in here is a low temp grease like this one, because if you put a thick grease in here, it might freeze up in the winter and your rotor will not retract. Now what you want to do is put the rope rotor with the spring inside the recoil assembly. And what you want to do is line up the spring here. You can sit right inside to this part over here. So the spring will catch onto this. So I try to line it up as close as I can to that. There we go. See, once you turn a bit and it comes back, you know you've got the spring engaged in there. So just leave that the way it is. So now what I'm going to do is put the paws from the old rope rotor onto the new one. You can start with one at a time and be careful when you pull them out because there are some small springs inside here that you don't want to lose. And here's the spring I'm talking about. So I'm going to put my finger over here so I don't lose it, pull out the other paw. And now this is the part where you want to use your good pliers for this and just reach down and grab the little spring and just pull out like this. And then what you want to do is just install it in the new rope rotor like this. Here's how that spring goes in there right there so i'm going to put the other one in again i'm just going to pull it out the two springs are in there now it's time to put the paws in there and when you put the paws you want to get this part of the spring in front of the paw see it's holding it in there and the same on this side Just like that. Now what you want to do is put the nylon washer right here. Then make sure you've got your pin ready with the washer on top, the spring under the washer like that. And now grab the plate, put that in there. And now when it comes to installing the plate and the pin, you want to line up the small parts that are protruding here right in front here of the paws. That's very important. If you don't do this correctly, the recoil will not work. So usually what I do is I just get the pin started so I don't lose the washer under there. And then I bring it right in front of the paws, just like that. Now hold the rope rotor and just turn the plate to the right. And if you see that the paws want to open, you've got it in the right position, in the correct position. Now just hold everything like that. And now go back to your vise, put the recoil in the exact same position so that the pin is actually lined up with the space in your vise. And now what you want to do is get that pin back in to where it was before. So I do highly recommend that you wear safety glasses. Just get that pin started. I usually start it with the hammer and go as deep as I can without hitting the plate. 
Now, before I put the pin back in with the punch, I will check the position of the plate here to make sure it's correct. So this is perfect. And now what I'll do is grab my bigger punch and just punch it back in, but don't go too far. Now what you want to do is check how easily the recoil turns. And when you turn the rope rotor, you want to see the paws come out. So this is exactly what you want to see here, is when you turn it, the paws come out. If you've pushed the pin in too far, what's going to happen is the rope rotor will be seized inside the recoil. You will not be able to turn it. If you've done that, you need to go back on the other side and punch the pin the, in the other direction to loosen the rope rotor. Believe me, I've done it before myself and I often have to go back and push the pin back in to loosen the recoil. And if you haven't pushed in the pin enough, what's going to happen when you turn the rope rotor, the paws won't come out. So it's a fine balance here uh, to where you want to get it so it's not too tight and not too loose. But again, if you've made a mistake, just go back, punch the pin back out, and then do it until it's like this. I got lucky here, I did it on the first try, but I've done many of these in the past, and maybe that's why. So now the recoil works excellent, and I'll just put the rope in and attach a handle. So for those recoils, you can get a rope that is a number four or a number 4.5, and you need it to be at least 67 inches for those to come see engines. And now what I'll do is make a knot to where it goes in the handle. And once I get it in the handle, I just pull it to make sure it's tight. Now, I did make a video in the past on how to replace the pull cord on this recoil. People asked me if the rope has snapped out, how many turns would you turn the rope rotor to load up the spring? Well, it'd be about four to five turns. So I like to do that before I put the rope in. So we're about two, I guess here. I'm going to go four turns and that's four turns from where the rope goes in to the hole here. Then what I'll do is lock it up here. Then what I do is I run the rope through the top here. And then you want to get it through that hole. Make a small knot at the end. Now pull on the rope, get the screwdriver out of there and let your rope go back in. So I wound this up four turns and I still need to do it. So four wasn't enough. Now this is where the small hole that I melted in the rope rotor will come in very, very handy. So I'm going to line it up like that. Then get your rope out and get it in the hole that you melted. Wound it up one more turn like this. This will make the spring even tighter and the rope should all retract back in. Now what I'll do is spray some WD-40 back here as well. I know I've put grease in there, but this might make things a bit smoother. So even with five turns, it's still a little limp. So I'm going to give it one more turn. Now this may vary on your machine. You're, you might only need four turns or five. So I think I'm going on six here if I'm correct. I may have lost count. But again, I've got it in the hole here. I'm going to do one more turn. So, so now that recoil retracts perfectly, it's not limp, 
if it's a bit limp what's going to happen when it gets cold outside it'll be even worse and when you start the machine it'll be hanging down from the recoil which you don't want that so this is great and as I did also you can spray WD-40 liquid wrench any kind of lube in here as well in addition to the grease that I sprayed earlier like this this was the grease that I used all I'm going to do now is just put that sticker back on. Before I put the sticker back on, I usually wipe it because the WD-40 may have come out the other end. And there's usually enough glue left on the sticker to get it back on. And if there's not enough glue, just buy some super glue. It'll work good for this. And now the recoil's all repaired stickers on it's got a new rope new spring it's as good as new so if this video has helped you guys please like the video and share it with your friends and even bookmark it in case you need to do this repair yourself thanks for watching guys and make sure you're subscribed to my channel and have a great day